Hi, welcome back to the power of model drawing. Today, we are going to look at before and after model, and we are going to revise what is before and after, and also recognize internal transfer, and uh, what is total unchanged. So let's look at example one, and let's highlight the keywords. Now, Hassan had two boxes of pairs, all right? And, uh, okay, let me just do one more time. Now, Hassan had two boxes of pairs, box A and box B. Box A contains seven times as many pairs as box B. So this is your before statement. After Hassan transferred 1176 pairs from box A to box B, this is your change. And then what happened in the end? Both boxes had an equal number of pairs, and that's the after. So how many more pairs were there in box A than box B at first? So this is uh, clearly a before and after problem. So over here, there is an internal transfer happening. Like you take out the apples from box A and you transfer into box B. And it all happens in the same problem, right? So we call it internal transfer. And uh, when there's internal transfer, the total is unchanged. Now, we are going to draw out the model. So again, just to let you know, when you draw a model, there's nothing to do with, I mean, there's no solving at the beginning. You only focus on the drawing. And then after that, you use the model and you solve the problem. So let's, uh, let's draw the before model. And when you draw the model, you always start at the beginning. So Hassan had two boxes of pairs, A and B. So we have uh, A and B, and box A contains seven times. So you draw a rectangle, you cut into seven boxes, right? Four, five, six, and seven. And then box B will have one box, which is one time. So that is your, uh, that's your before, right? Before model. All right, then what happened? Now, Hassan transferred 1176 pairs from uh, box, uh, box A to box B. And then what happened later on? Both boxes had equal number of pairs. So how do we draw the after? Now to draw the after, right, uh, you will have equal number in the end, right? So when you draw the after model, you always start from the same dotted line. So it means that uh, your box A will now have lesser pairs, so that will be a shorter rectangle, and your box B will now have more, right? And that will be longer rectangle. Uh, but in the end, there will be equal number of pairs in each boxes. So you have two equal rectangles. Okay, now, what is unchanged? The total is unchanged, right? Okay, so what do we do next? How many more pairs were there in box A than box B at first? So your question mark is to put uh, over here. And can we put the 1176 pairs, right, that he transferred from box A to box B? Uh, yes, we can, right? So how do we put that into the model? Now, you can see that box A had seven boxes at first, and then now box A has a shorter rectangle, so which means that he must have he must have what? He must have transferred, taken out 1176, which is over here. All right, so now box A has 1176 lesser than before. Agree? Okay, th so that's how you put your 1176. Now, and uh, the model is completed already. You have put the question mark inside the model. So everything is all done. So what do we do next? Now, you can call the boxes units. So let's call one unit for every one of these box. Uh, and there will be a total of eight units, right? Now, if the total is unchanged, uh, do we know the total number of pairs in both boxes? We don't know, but we know the total units at first, which is eight units. And in the after model, that will also be the same total, right? Which is also eight units. So which means that, can you cut the after model into, uh, into eight boxes, right? How do you cut into eight boxes for the total? The box A will have four units, right four units okay and box b will have also four units all right you can see that the model doesn't look quite proportional the boxes are not proportional uh, but it doesn't matter as long as you indicate correctly right your one unit clearly in the boxes so the size doesn't really matter because you have put one unit into the boxes already all right so now you can see that the total is unchanged eight units at first eight units uh, after all right, so how many boxes or how many units do you transfer from box A into box B? You can see that at first, in box A, there are seven units, all right, seven units of apples in box A, and now there are four units of apples in box A in the end. So you must have taken out three units of apples and put into box B. So your three units will be equal to 1176, all right? And then the next step is to always find one unit. So after you draw the model, what is the next thing to do? You look at the model and use it to solve, all right? And, uh, and model drawing, the purpose is also to always try to get one unit. 
And so once you find your one unit, you can almost you can solve the problem already. So one one seven six divided by three, one unit will be three hundred and ninety two. So how many more apples in box A than box B at first? So uh, box A had seven unit at first. Box B has one unit at first, and you minus. So box A has six unit more than uh, more than box B at first. And how many is six unit? That will be uh, go back to one unit, which is three nine two, and then you times six, and that will be two thousand three hundred and fifty two apples in box A than box B at first, and you have solved the problem. Okay. So what's the lesson here? The lesson here is uh, if it's a before and after problem, what is unchanged? The total is unchanged. Then what do you do? You make the total the same, right? For box, uh, for the before model and the after model. Okay. Now let's now go on to uh, all right. Go on to the next question. All right. Example two. And uh, now it's a little bit different. Uh, all right. So let's read. Kelly has three hundred forty-eight dollars more than Sandy. That is the before. How much money must Kelly give to Sandy? So that Kelly will have fifty dollars more than her. So what's the change? The change is Kelly is going to give money to Sandy, and that is internal transfer. When somebody is giving to another person in the same problem, all right, then you have internal transfer, and total is will be unchanged. And then what's the after? Kelly has now fifty dollars more than her. All right, so it seems to be a little hard to solve. Uh, so always remember when you can draw out the problem. Uh, it becomes actually very easy. So focus on drawing out the sentence. Don't think about. Don't start thinking about how to solve. All right. Don't think about what is the first step, second step. Uh, all right. It will be quite hard. So let's draw out the before model first. And you look at the first sentence. Kelly has more than Sandy. So you draw a long rectangle for Kelly and a short rectangle for Sandy. Now, when you draw these rectangles, uh, don't draw them to be about the same length. You should draw one with long, or uh, one with a uh, one that is long, and then the other rectangle should be sh uh, to be should be shorter. So don't draw the two rectangles with almost the same length. All right, because sometimes uh, some students, right, some of you, you like to draw something like that, and then what happened? You can see the difference is not very, it's very obvious, right? It's not very obvious. So we want to make the difference more obvious. How to make the difference more obvious? I will usually draw the shorter rectangle to be about half the length, right? About half the length. Okay, now so Kelly has three hundred forty-eight dollars more. So if the model seems or if the problem seems to be a little hard and you are not quite sure uh, how to solve or how to draw, then what you do is you always put the number outside the model, keep the inside clean, right? So that you may want to cut cut late, cut something inside later. So if you are not sure how to draw, uh, always put the numbers outside. Uh, but don't worry, even if you put the number inside and you find that you need to cut cut something, you can always erase it and put it outside. Okay, so you have done the first sentence. So how much money must Kelly give to Sandy? So which means that Kelly is going to cut, uh, Kelly is going to give some money to Sandy. So I cut this part, which is going to be given away, and then that box is going to go over to Sandy, right? So Sandy is going to receive, right? Receive that money, all right? And then how does the uh, after model looks like? Now the after model, in the end, all right? Kelly is still going to have more than her. Right, but of course Kelly will have lesser money. So when you draw the after model, uh, always draw, draw at the same side. All right, start your rectangles. All right, draw the rectangles starting from the same dotted line. And so how long should Kelly's rectangle be? Now Kelly's rectangle, when you draw at the after, should be until the dotted line. So which means that if you draw her rectangle, it's going to be something like this until the dotted line. So it'll be a good idea to draw a dotted line to show you where is the ending, where is the end of the rectangle. And then for Sally, where is the end of her rectangle in the after? That will be until the dotted line as well. So you draw a rectangle for Sandy, all right, and that is until, uh, until the dotted line. So this is the after model. So how much money must Kelly give to Sandy so that Kel uh, Kelly will have $50 more than her? And that is your $50. Okay, and uh, your model is done already. So you have drawn out the whole problem. All right, if you look at the model and try to now study the model and, and solve it, uh, it's actually quite easy. Now, one thing about model drawing is you have to do cutting, right? Sometimes you have to do cutting. For example, if I cut, above. Isn't that the same, right? the same box as below, which is the question mark, which is the money that Kelly gave to Sandy, 
right? It's the same. And then you go down, all right? Look at the, the, the question marks, right? And you go, go downwards and you cut the same portion, all right? Cut out the same portion. So you can see that uh, you have equal portions from top to down, right? Equal size, right? Equal, the boxes looks the same. And then you uh, and then you look at the middle box, all right? Can you find how much or what is the middle box? How many is the middle box? All right. Now, if you look at the middle box, uh, how much would that be? Now, you can see that if you go down, you can see there's a $50 more, right? So, which means that Kelly has $50 more than Sandy in the end, and you go higher, and the middle box is also the same as $50, all right? And then, what do you see? And then you can see that this whole thing is the same as $348. Right? Okay, because the arrow sign at the bottom is 348. So if you go higher, it's the same. Right? And then you can see also that the question marks represent equal, equal, right? Equal units. Right? They are actually the same. So it means that you have one unit here, and then this will be also another one unit. Alright, so can you find how much is one unit? Yes, I can. So what do you do? If you look carefully, now you can see that. 1 unit plus 50 plus another, one, uh, plus another 1 unit, that will give you $348. So you take 1 unit plus 1 unit, that will be 2 units. And 2 units will be 348 and you minus 50, right? And that will give you $298. So can you find 1 unit? So you take 298 and divide by 2, and you will get $149. So how much did Kelly give to Sandy? Kelly gave one unit to Sandy, and Sandy received that one unit. So how much is that one unit? That one unit is $149, all right? And that's how you solve the problem, all right? Using before and after, and the total is unchanged. But in this problem, there's no total given to you. So, so you, can't use, you can't do anything with the total. There's no total given to you. Uh, but you can still draw the model, and then you compare the model, and then you use it to solve. All right, so that's how you, uh, you, how you get the answer. Okay, let's go to practice problem. And uh, okay, I'm gonna give you about five to 10 minutes to try to work out. So your time starts now. Once you have gotten the answer, drawn the model, uh, you can play the video and then check your answer again. All right, so your time starts now. All right, so have you solved the problem? All right, let's highlight and uh, let's uh, highlight the important words and numbers. There were 210 marbles in box A and box B all together. Lindy transferred 10 marbles from box A to box B. That is the transfer, that's the change. And it's the internal transfer, so total is unchanged. You take out marbles from box A, put into box B in the same problem. So the total is unchanged. As a result, the marbles in box B was six times the marbles in box A. That is the after. So how many marbles were there in box B at first? So it's a clearly a very, uh, it's a before and after problem. Very easy to see that. Uh, then you need to ask what is unchanged. So total is unchanged. All right, so let's draw the model again. And again, uh, you always focus on the drawing. Don't try to think about how to solve. After you have done the drawing, then you look at the model and see how to solve. So there were 210 marbles in box A and box B. Now, did the question say uh, whether box A has more or box B has more? Uh, we are not sure. Okay, we are not sure whether box A has more or box B has more. So then what do we do? Then we can assume, right? We can, uh, we can, uh, we can pretend, or we can assume that box A maybe has more and box B has lesser. So you can also assume the other way. Box B has more, box A has lesser. Uh, also can, all right? So uh, that's the beauty of model drawing. When the question is not clear, you can make your own assumption. You can draw out your own rectangles. All right? Later on, you will then see whether is your assumption correct. So Lindy transferred 10 marbles from box A to box B. As a result, box B, all right, which is the after, box B will have six times, all right, six times that of uh, box, box A. So it means that box B will, uh, will have more, right, six times. Okay, so how do we draw box B? Let's draw, box B must have a longer rectangle than before, right? Because box B received the marbles. So now box B has about six times. So we cut one, two, three, four. 
four, five, six, and uh, box A will have one time left. Okay, that is how you draw the after model. And uh, so how do you put the 10 marbles? Lily transferred 10 marbles from uh, box A to box B. Ah, so, which means that, which means what? Which means that the 10 more must be here. Why? Because now box A has 10 lesser, right, than before. So box, right, so that's why you put 10, 10, 10, 10 more in the after model, right? He take out, uh, she took out 10 marbles from box A, and now she has 10 lesser in box A. Alright, so how many marbles were there in box B at first? So your question mark is to, uh, is to, uh, is to find box B. So your model is done already. Uh, all the numbers, have you put all the numbers inside? If you haven't, then you need to complete your model. There were 210 marbles in box A than box B at first, right? So that is your important number that you have to put inside. Once everything is put inside, you have your error sign, labeling, you have your question marks, and nothing else is going to be drawn, right? You feel, if you find that you have done all the drawing, nothing else is, to, uh, nothing else is uh, needed, right? Or you have nothing else to draw, then you can start calling the boxes, which look the same, or which are all equal, you can start calling them one unit. So you always indicate the one unit at the end of the drawing. Right, so because uh, you may need to cut, right, we are not sure whether we need to cut the boxes into even smaller boxes, uh, so it's always better to indicate the one you need at the end of all your drawing. Okay, so now we are done. Right, model drawing is done, and uh, if your model is fantastic, you don't actually need to look at the question, because what is unchanged? The total is unchanged, so in the after, the total is still 210. And what do you see? You can see that how many units are there in the after model? There are a total of seven boxes or seven units, which is also 210. So your one unit must be 210 divided by seven, which is, uh, so one unit is equal to 210 and divide by seven, one unit is 30. So can you find how many, uh, how many, what is that? <laughs> okay, what is in the box? How many marbles are there in box B, which is, uh, six units, right? There are six units in box B in the end, so you have 30 times 6, so that will be 180 marbles in box B in the end, and of course box A, that will be 30 marbles in box A in the end, right? In the end. Alright, now, so how many marbles are there in box A at first? Alright, so let's work backwards. So can we find how many marbles in box A at first? You take 30 and you plus 10 and there will be 40 marbles in box A at first. All right, then how about box B? Now, box B will have how many at first? You take the total, which is 210, unchanged total, and minus your box A, which is 40, right? And you will get 170 marbles in box B at first, right? Okay, and you got the answer, but you realize that your model looks weird. All right, your before model looks, uh, it doesn't look correct uh, because box A is supposed to have a shorter rectangle than box B. Box B has more, right? So it's supposed to be a longer rectangle. Uh, but you can see the power of model drawing. Sometimes when uh, your model may not be accurate because you are, you, you are not sure whether box A has more or box B has more at first, so you make your own assumption and you can still get the answer, right? Just that at the end of the drawing, ah, then you realize that, oops, it's actually supposed to be, uh, box A is supposed to have a shorter rectangle at first. Okay, but you will still get the answer, right, anyway. All right, so, uh, so what is the lesson here? The lesson here is make your own assumption, all right? Sometimes the question doesn't tell you which box has more. So you just assume, right? Because you will still be able to get the answer if you draw your model properly, all right? If you draw your model uh, as accurately as you can, and you also know what is unchanged, and then with that, you will be able to still get the answer. And then once you get the answer, you will realize, all right? You'll be able to find out whether did you draw your model correctly or not. So over here in this, in, in this practice problem, we realize that, oh, actually we draw the model uh, it's not accurate, right? it's, not really, uh, it's not really the correct length, uh, but anyway, we still get the answer. Okay, all right, so we come to the end of the, the model drawing lesson. So uh, pretty, uh, very soon we will go into the P5 model drawing and it's gonna be quite, uh, quite fun, quite challenging, uh, and the model drawing is gonna get, uh, get more, uh, uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna look nicer, right? The model will look nicer and uh, you'll be, 
very exciting to draw. All right, so uh, see you in the next lesson, and hopefully at the end of all these P3 and P4 model drawing lessons, uh, you have now you are now feeling better and more confident, right? More confident in solving the different kinds of work problems that you may see in your school homework or even your school exam. So all these questions that you have done so far, all right, uh, most of these problems, or rather all these problems, they are the common kind of questions that, uh, that you will face in your school. So if you know how to draw this model, how to draw this problem, then you should be able to do quite okay for your, for your assessments, for your schoolwork, or for your exams. All right, so see you in the next lesson.